life kind of tries to kick us in the teeth still. But when we face it with God and not fear, I'm just saying, <laughs> just saying, okay. Um, so uh, we started out, we talked a little bit about, um, we talked a little bit last week about just what we let into our eyes, what we see, what we look at, what we watch, what we allow ourselves to be a part of um, seeing. And just to remind you guys, Luke 11, 34 through 36 says, your eye is the lamp of your body. When your eyes are healthy, your whole body also is full of light. But when they are unhealthy, your body is also full of darkness. See to it then that the light within you is not darkness. Therefore, if your whole body is full of light and no part of it dark, it will be just as full of light as when a lamp shines its light on you. Okay, so here's the deal. What that's saying is what you allow yourselves to see, you're allowing directly, literally right into your heart. The scripture is not necessarily like just a metaphorical thing. It, it, it's, it's real. Your eyes are the window to your heart. What you choose to look at you're accepting into your heart. It's kind of like if your heart was a door, you're opening that door to whatever you're watching. So if you're looking at things that are good, that are peaceful, that are amazing, that are awesome, you're allowing goodness into your heart. If you're looking at things that are evil, that are foul, that are nasty, that are not of God, you're allowing things that are not of God and that are evil into your heart. Choice is yours, but I think we know which one probably the right one is for each of you. And here's what I want to say, especially in this season. If you guys choose not to be careful with what you see and you choose to go out and look at things that you know you probably shouldn't be looking at, and later on you're dealing with the repercussions of that through nightmares or major fears in your life or things that you don't understand how to explain but they're going on, I'm telling you guys right now, God still has freedom for you in those situations. But why go into those situations and allow those things in your heart in the first place when all you have to do is not look? I oh, don't know. That's me. Um, the next place that we went to, uh, in particular, and this is really uh, a major part of what we're going to focus on tonight, is our three major fears that are kind of connected to every other fear that we face. Okay? Does anybody remember what they are? The fact that you got two of them, I'm like super impressed right now. Way to go. Yeah. The third one is a fear of pain. So, yeah, way to go. That's awesome. I'm, I'm impressed. So, yes, the, the three fears that, like, we can kind of connect almost any fear that we face to um, are the fear of man, fear of failure, fear of death. Okay? Um, how many of you guys struggle with one of those, or maybe you have struggled with some form of fear revolving around one of those three or one? Okay. Um, so, real quick, let me recap, and then I'll let you guys know what we're going to do tonight, because I think it's going to be pretty cool. Um, so, first off, we have the fear of man. Here's what scripture has to say about fearing man, or therefore not fearing man, okay? Hebrews 13, 6. So, we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, so I will have no fear. What can mere people do to me? Uh, they actually can't. If you have God, unless you allow them to. But if you basically just say, God, I'm not going to fear that person because I have you inside of me. Now people can't do anything to you. Galatians 1.10. Obviously, I'm not trying to win approval of people, but of God. If pleasing people were my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. Here's the thing. Back in the day, when people chose to preach the gospel... They got ridiculed for it. Some of them got abused for it. Some of them got put in prison for it. Some of them got literally beat with whips for it. And many of them ended up crucified or even fed to lions or so on and so forth because they believed in Jesus Christ. Does that give us a reason to be afraid? Kind of. If we're looking at it from the flesh. But if we have an understanding of where we're going, if we have an understanding of how God can utilize even our death here on earth to touch other people, now all of a sudden we don't have to be afraid anymore. It doesn't mean you're not going to have fear in the moment, but you don't have to attach yourself to that fear. You don't have to allow that fear to be a part of you, okay? 
because you get to know where you go. How do you know where you go when you're dead? Like when you're gone? Like if something bad would happen to you? You have a relationship with God. <laughs> it's really simple. If you choose to have a relationship with God, He gets to show you more and more what His heaven looks like. He gets to show you more and more what your future home is going to look like. Because we're not home right now. When you guys leave and you drive to the houses that you live in for the moment, that's not home. Home is when we get to heaven and we get to be with God. Okay, does that make sense? Amen. Next scripture is Colossians 3.23. Work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. So, when you get up in the morning and do your hair, ladies... Are you doing your hair for a boy? No. Are you doing your hair for yes. all the other girls to notice? Yes. Are you doing your hair for you? Yes. And for God? Yes. Obviously, we kind of know the right answer, but sometimes I know that we get caught up in that I have to impress people thing. And that's kind of going to be discussed a little bit tonight. It's not... Same with you guys. Some of you try to dress a certain way because you're trying to impress people. Go try to impress people and impress God. Here's the deal. Listen. Listen. If you guys work diligently to impress God and not people, people will be impressed with you because they see something worth following. That's good. Oh. That's good. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's, that's Mic drop. No, no, no. Seriously, you guys. If you work diligently to impress your God, people are going to be impressed with you, not because of you, but because you serve Him. Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, moving on to our next fear that we have. Um, the next one was the fear of failure. Here's what Luke 12, 6 through 7 has to say. Let's not. What is the price of five sparrows? It's two copper coins. Yet God does not forgive, uh, forget a single one of the sparrows. And the very hairs on your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. What this scripture again is saying is that sparrows have a value. There's a price. If you want a sparrow, it costs something. What is a sparrow? Bird. And the cost of that bird is two cents. And what this is saying is, that's like not that much money. How many of you guys like have two pennies and you would go spend it on a bird? It's kind of cool. Whatever, cool. That's awesome. Bring it home and name it Frederick. Um, Frederick. Come here, Frederick. Anyways. Here's what this scripture is saying, you guys. How much money are you worth? The answer is priceless. There's not a cost for you. And if God cares about a sparrow that actually has a value of two cents, how much more so does he care about you? So you don't have to fear your failures. Because if you go out and you stumble and you do something wrong or you try and it doesn't work for you or you go out and step out and get made fun of, you don't have to worry about it. God's got you. God's placed a value on you that not even money can touch. There's no amount to it. You guys are worth a lot to him. You guys are very special, special and precious to him, okay? And then the last fear that we have, um, just to recap it, is um, fear of death. And here's what uh, Psalms 23, 4 says. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You guys can be in your darkest place. You can be in your darkest hour. It can be the worst of the worst. And God's right there. He loves you. You guys can literally be on death's doorstep, and you're not alone. And if you did die, you're not going to die. You're going to live for eternity. Hebrews 2, 14 through 15. Because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the Son also became flesh and blood. For only as a human being could he die, and only by dying could he break the power of the devil, who had the power of death. Only in this way could he set free.
free all who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. It's literally what scripture says. Because we have Jesus Christ, we don't have to live with fear. And if you guys fear death, if you guys really fear death, then ask Jesus to show you what it means to really be alive here because of him. And if you guys fear somebody else dying, listen to, you, listen to this. If, if you guys live and you're afraid of maybe your parents dying or a friend dying or something like that, it's just a twinge that's hit you in life. What if they were gone? Then do your best to give them Jesus over and over and over and over again so that you know where they're going to go. If you give Jesus and you give love to people, oftentimes they'll take it. And when they take it, they start relationship with him. And when they start relationship with him, what do they have? Eternal when they start relationship with Jesus, Which means they have eternal life. Eternal life. There we go. We got to take a You guys got there. Tacos? Tacos are good. Almost fell over the chair and tried to kill me. Um, Hebrews 2 14 through 15. Wait a second. I'm going to skip that one. John 11 25. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after death. Anyone who believes in me will live, even after dying. So don't be afraid of death. Don't be afraid of man. And don't be afraid to fail. Because your failures will lead you to your greatest successes if you allow them to. If you choose not to learn from failure, or even worse, you choose never to step out and possibly fail, you'll never progress. But if you choose to step out and even fail, you can learn from those failures and become who God created you to be. Again, my drop. Okay, seriously though, we, we have some things that we're going to do that's pretty cool tonight. So I would like to, with that being said, that's kind of a recap here. Um, I would like to invite two very special and wonderful, amazing young ladies up here that are going to kind of talk to you about how God's been working them through their fears. Okay? I'd like to invite Tabitha. And Lene Weaver to come forward. So here is why I have these two girls up here tonight. Okay? Um, these two girls have walked through quite a bit. Right? Quite a bit of life already. And you've defeated quite a few things in your hearts and fears that you guys have faced and so on and so forth. I'd like to interview them tonight so that you guys can kind of hear their answers based on the fears that they've faced and how they've defeated them in their life and are continuing to defeat them every single day. So uh, first uh, question is for Lynn A. Weaver. Yeah. What is the worst fear you've ever had to overcome in your life? been scared of like how people um, thought about me and like if they talked about me behind my back and stuff like that so I've always been like scared of like a fear of man pretty much because I'm always just scared of what people think about me and I've kind of gotten over that recently. So when you have a moment where you're like afraid of what people are thinking about you what does that look like what does it feel like for you? It's it's just like a bunch of thoughts in your head, like, oh my gosh, what are they thinking about me? Like, am I doing something wrong? Is my outfit bad? <laughs> like, stuff like that. Like, you're just, like, all, like, you're overthinking everything, and you just are scared of, like, what they might think about you. Yeah. Everybody give her a hand. <laughs> How many of you guys have a fear very similar to that, where you want to be able to step out and do something, but you know, or maybe you where you step up in front of a bunch of people and it literally feels like they all have laser beams that they're trying to kill you with with their eyeballs. You know what I'm saying? Like it just shuts you down. All right, here's the second question goes to Tabitha. What's the worst fear that you've had to overcome in your life? I 
think the worst fear that I've had to overcome was just like not being good enough because I used to kind of just be blinded by like being perfect and like I had to dress a certain way and act a certain way so people would like me. And so like I think it was like three to four months ago I like I overcame it and I'm slowly like still like recovering so I have moments where like I'll fall. But that's like the biggest fear I've had to overcome. So what does it look like now in your process you're going through for you to kind of fall in that, um, overcoming that? Well, I have like moments where like, cause I used to cut a lot. And so I, I now have like moments where I want to, but I tell myself like I can't, it's like, it's not a good way to cope anymore. And I decide I'm gonna pray instead because I know God can help get me through this instead of cutting. So that's just not gonna do anything in the end. Um, and so God can help me get through this and I know when I pray, I'll end up feeling better in the end. Let me ask you one more question revolving around, uh, especially the cutting thing, because I'm sure that there's probably several people in here that struggle with that as well, Tabitha. I and mean, I thank you for opening up with that. Um, when you would falter and choose to cut yourself versus when you choose to put the blade down and pray and seek God, what makes you feel better in the end and also, like, what takes more work, but, you know what I mean? Um, I think the one that has, like, a, um, you end up feeling better in the end is praying, because, um, I know, like, with cutting, it just left me, like, feeling more hurt, and I felt more in pain, because I had open wounds now, and it took a long time to, like, kind of, like, overcome it, because, um, like, three or four months ago, when I let it go, I still had like a little box that I kept the blades in, and so it took time having to get rid of them so that I know I wouldn't go back to it in general. Um, so now it's just like, um, I tend to go to my room when like I'm not in like a good mood so I don't like end up like yelling or doing anything to hurt my family. Like that's where like I need like a way to cope and so praying is like tip is what I'll end up doing. I'll just like, I'll be somewhere in my room, I'll probably like be on my knees and I'll just be praying because I know that makes me feel better in the end because I know I have someone to, that will listen to me and help me. That's so good. Everybody give her a hand. Here's the thing, you guys. Oftentimes the fears that we face are going to lead us to things that we know are wrong, but sometimes we can't help to do it. We know that it's not okay. We know that obviously it's harming us in some way, whether it's harming us physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, whatever it might be. We, we want these coping mechanisms to try to make us feel better. But in the end, all it does is leave us feeling more shattered, more broken. Here's what the Bible says. Set your mind on things above. I've even had to tell myself this even recently. Set your mind on things above and not on earth. Because if we set our mind on things above, as Tabitha is choosing to doing, do when she goes and prays, for me, sometimes it's prayer. Sometimes I'll go read a scripture. Sometimes I'll just turn, I'll turn on worship music and listen to some worship music. Sometimes I'll even just go watch an inspiring movie that is, it can either be slightly Christian based or something, but it just puts my mind on positive thoughts instead of negative thoughts. Whatever that might look like for you, um, and please, anything that is spoken by these two girls, I don't want to hear a word. I don't want to hear a word come back that you guys speak to them about this. This is their process, and they're opening up to you guys so that you can walk through your process tonight. They're sharing so you don't have to. Okay? Sound good? Like this. But if you guys need, if you guys have a process that you're walking through, I urge you, set your mind on things above. Okay? Next question for you, Lene. What helped you overcome that fear and how did that process look? Um, I think um, I just had to tell myself that it doesn't matter what people think about me because like, I'm the one that knows myself the best. Like, No one else knows me 100% like I know myself. And so if they make assumptions about me and stuff, like, they're not going to be 100% correct. Like, even if... Even if they think that I dress bad or I'm like rude to them or whatever, like I'm not trying to be. Like that's never my intention. And um, I just I think like people make assumptions about people when they're uncomfortable about themselves. 
and they're like not confident in themselves. And I've been guilty of that too, but um, I think just telling myself that doesn't matter what they think about me because I'm not gonna have to change for how they want me to be. That's good. How many, how many of you guys are kind of in that boat where you you have to try to balance out the thought of, I don't give a rip what people think about me in order to get anywhere in life, like in order to give a speech, in order to do something for school in front of people, in order to do something that you love to do, you literally have to like coach yourself into, I don't care what they think about me, I don't care about anybody, I'm, you know what I'm saying? How many of you guys have ever maybe even taken that too far in your mind? And, I don't care about people. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of guilty of that because um, I'm telling you guys right now, if you haven't done it before, stepping up on this stage, especially for those of you that come up and do offering with me when I randomly ask you guys to come up and do offering. Thanks for that, buddy. It's, it's a little nerve-wracking to get up here and grab the microphone in front of all of you guys. It, it doesn't, it doesn't, it, it, like to you sitting where you're at, it shouldn't seem scary, but you guys are scary. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> These are really scary, even for me. So there's times that I have to get up here and coach myself the way that Linnea is saying and just say, it's okay, it's not about me. Listen up, this is the good part. It's not about me. God, it's about you. If it were about me, God, you're gonna look like an idiot because I do things where I look like an idiot. But God, I pray that you would come and show up and speak through me. Reveal yourself to these people through me. I just want to be your vessel, God. It's not about me, and it's not about what they think about me. At the end of the day, if they make fun of me, God, that's perfectly fine. Because I'm doing it for you and not them. So, if you guys need to, I urge you, coach yourself in your heart and your mind. If you're so afraid of people that you can't step out and do something great in life, don't hold yourself back. Refuse that fear the way that Lene is saying. She's refusing it. And even if you have to coach yourself in that, just, again, pray, set your heart and your mind on things above and say, God, it's about you. I want it to be about you. God, as I begin to speak, as I begin to sing, as I begin to play, whatever it might be that you're doing in front of people that's got you scared out of your wits, just say, God, I'm doing it for you, not them. And then all of a sudden, this peace comes over you when you get started, I promise you. And let me ask you that question too, Lenny. When you first started leading worship the way that you did tonight, um, obviously you would have nerves like major right before you go right right before you start singing and get up on the stage right yeah. and then did it feel peaceful did it all of a sudden just go away as you start um, I remember the first time that I led worship I was like I was really scared and I don't get scared anymore like I really enjoy to do it and I have fun up here and I don't know, I just, I think it's really fun to be up here, but the first time, I was like super nervous, and I had butterflies, and I was like sweating, and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so scared, and um, I remember my friend was sitting in the back, and she's looking at me, and she's going like this, and that I like, there was like, I don't remember specifically the line, but it was like, what's the line? Anyway, I don't remember it, but it's something about like, um, putting a smile on your face because you're not like bound to your um, fears and so when she did that that was the line that I was singing and that's when a smile just came on my face because I was just like I'm not doing this for them like I, I'm enjoying myself and it might be scary because um, it was my first time doing it but I I just um, overcame my fear then when um, I sang that line and my friend was just um, giving me support that's awesome everybody give her a hand
help you step up and step out of your fears? Um, well, back at like the um, camp that we had this summer, that's when I like let everything go. Um, Cause like the first night, like the first day, I kind of was just not really like I was just kind of there because I wanted to be. The second day kind of got more like serious because I was just because like that night I've been praying because I knew I wanted to get baptized the next day. And so when I did, I just like laid everything out, and I was I, like I just said like I'm done with the way Satan's treating me. I don't want to like I don't want to be bound by the fact that I think I'm not good enough because of Satan. And so when I got baptized, I knew I like I'd let everything go. And so then like the next night, it was like a very powerful night. Um, and so I know like um, there was someone who came like prayed with me, and like we just kind of sat there for probably like ten minutes or so. And, it was just like a very powerful moment and like that's when I knew it's like okay I'm ready to let go of this I'm ready to finally just completely follow God and um, not let Satan get in my way anymore like I might have my downfalls but I always kind of go back to the Lord because I know he's way better than Satan that's so good Tabitha um, for those of you that don't know we as a youth ministry really try to put on events throughout the year that um, are inspiring, life changing, um, man, just kind of can place this culture inside of your heart uh, and desire inside of your heart to be changed. And so, um, if you guys will connect with us on some of those trips, or what Tabby's speaking to, obviously, we didn't actually get to go to a camp facility this year, but we just kind of did camp in town this year, and it was still one of those things that God just showed up and changed our lives. He did great things. And Tabitha was able to step out um, of her fears because of God's encouragement in her heart. It's because of an encounter. Okay, listen up, this is the good part. It's because of an encounter that she had with God. If you guys want to not only step out of your fears, but really just grow in general, spiritually, mentally, in every way, it comes down to the encounters that you have with God. It comes down to being up here during worship and encountering God, asking him to come heal you, asking him to come and touch your heart. Does that make sense? So the more that you're praying and seeking God for an encounter with him, the more he's going to show up. Um, all right, are you ready, Lene? Yeah, are you going to have an answer to this one? Another what? In terms of eating cheese sandwiches, <laughs> have you ever been too scared to eat a certain kind of cheese sandwich, like a blue cheese or green cheese sandwich? Please stay why or why not? I mean, I've never heard of green cheese, but <laughs> um, green cheese is gross. So I've, I've never had like a blue cheese sandwich. Does it make you tremble to look at a blue cheese sandwich? It's growing mold. Like, you're not supposed to eat that. <laughs> <laughs> How many of you guys would eat a blue cheese sandwich? Like, literally, that's all it's on is blue cheese. <laughs> you guys are yucky. <laughs>
then, um, I don't know, I'll get encounters like them and, like, get to feel them, got to get to feel God, like, move through me just like my friends did. And so, um, since then, I, since Prime, I've become, like, more confident to pray for people, to talk to new people, and, yeah. I think that's good. Um, I think a lot of times we end up putting God in a little box. Like, God, this is where I kind of want to feel your presence and your spirit, but I'm not willing to, <laughs> whatever it might be. And the reason we're not willing to is because of our fears. And what, what I found happen, not only for me, and but Lene is also saying, is when she was willing to get outside of that little box she had made for God and said, you know what, God? I'm willing to step out because I want to feel your presence more. Because I want to encounter you more. Because I want to have you be with me more. All of a sudden, God was able to do that. But if we keep God in our little box, if I'm not willing to go up there in front. I'm not willing to do that. I'm not saying God won't encounter you in your chair, but what if he wanted you to take action? You know, to me... When we feel that pressing to go up to the front or step out and be worshiped the first time or come up and preach, the way that Tabitha did about a month and a half ago, um, here's the deal, you guys. If, if you're talking about a relationship someday when you get married to a husband or a wife, if you look at that person and you say, listen, like, I don't mind sitting here and watching, like, a romantic movie with you, but I'm not holding your hand. I'm not even going to hold your hand. How long is your relationship with that person going to last? Listen up. Listen up. Listen up. Your relationship with that person is going to die very quickly because you're unwilling to connect with that person. If you keep God in a little box, you're the one keeping your relationship with God dead. So until you're willing to step out and do something that you wouldn't otherwise do and break through your fears, you're holding yourself back in your relationship with God. That was really good for me. Um, so Tabitha, what changed in your personal life as you overcame the fear? Um, one thing that overchanged is I ended up letting go of friends that were like enabling me to not feel good enough. Um, I ended up like now like I'm way like I'm I guess I do like I pray more, I read the Bible more and I try to do more stuff um, with God and I try to follow what he says. So that's why I ended up like coming to you when I felt like the like um like God was trying to tell me that I needed that someone here could need to hear a message about like the the fact that they are good enough. It doesn't matter what they look like. Um, so it's just more and more like in tune with God now, and like Satan's just more out of my life because I don't let him in, and I don't fall for the temptations anymore because God had like touched me, and it was like a very for me it felt very powerful. And so I'm like very thankful that he did, and so I'm just. That's just kind of how I deal with it now. Awesome. So what I hear you saying within that is when you chose to break out of your fears, um, that's like when that's like when you were really able to connect with God in a big way um, and also step out and touch people's lives versus otherwise you know, touch people's lives. Yeah. I probably wouldn't have had the courage to like come to you and ask to preach or even to probably be up doing worship with um, like an amazing worship team. I probably would never have the courage if I didn't. If like I ever let go of it and like God actually talk to me and tell me that I am good enough. That's awesome. And then Lene, what did the uh, what did the process look like for you to get over your self image fears um, when it felt like you were stuck? Self-image here. Uh, my dad would always tell me, like, because he always makes fun of me because I'm like, what if people will think this about me? Just like joking around. And he's like, people aren't going to think that about you because, like, literally everybody has self-image issues and stuff like that. And um, doubting themselves and um, how they act, how they look, um, 
And so he always told me not to think about what they're thinking about me because everyone is like thinking about what everybody's thinking about them, so they're not thinking about anybody else either. And so I always like told myself that, and yeah. I was just gonna say the way that you just said all of that, I get it, because I had to do all of that, but it's like, what? What Lene is saying that her dad spoke to her and what is the encouragement here for you guys is everybody else isn't thinking about what's wrong with you. Because we all have self-image stuff, everybody's thinking about what's wrong with them. So you don't have to worry about people thinking negative about you because they're thinking about them. Here's the trick. People that actually do have a purpose in life to come out, step out, and be rude to you, when you choose to step out and do something, usually feel so disgusted about themselves they're trying to dig up dirt on you. But in reality, you were willing to step out and do something with your life, and now all they're choosing to step out and do is make fun of you, so they're not stepping out and doing anything. <laughs> Here's the deal. If you, guys, if you guys want to, even if you do get made fun of or ridiculed for something in life because somebody's trying to think about you, what it really comes down to is they're probably jealous of what you're choosing to do because they know they're too afraid to do it. But the majority of the time, people are so caught up in their own self-image issues that they're not going to come to you and talk to you about what you think is wrong with you. Because they have no idea what you think is wrong with you. <laughs> That's good. Um, and then the last, um, last question I have for both of you girls, and you can just answer it super duper quickly. What's the best piece of advice that you can give to your peers um, about how to live without regrets? I think that you're always going to regret, like, if you're too scared to do something, like, whether it's coming up here or just talking to someone, praying for them, um, giving a word over them, you're always going to be too scared to do it, and so you're not going to do it, and you're just going to tell God no, or whether it's, even if it's just, like, another um, fear that you have that doesn't really have to do with church, um, but I always just had to, like, step out of my comfort zone, because the only way that you're going to get, like, more confident in stuff is if you take action and change um, your comfort level, I guess. Same question. Uh, I, I kind of the same with Lene. It's, it's just like, at, um, I tend to like pray about it as well, because like, um, when it comes to like being up on stage like tonight or when I was preaching, I was praying consistently about it because I didn't want to like regret not coming up here or not going and praying for someone. Um, so it's just like, I would say pray about it if like you're kind of like on the edge, like is this God or not? Just pray about it because he will, he's more likely to give you an answer than you will give yourself. So good. What I love about what Tabitha just said to you guys, and this is kind of what I want to end with. Okay. Fear is a weapon. What's the best weapon that we have to come against the weapon of fear? Specifically, what do we do? Prayer. 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 100%. The best weapon we have to come against our fear is prayer. So don't forget that, you guys. Let me pray over you, and then I'll have the uh, bus ministry, y'all. So.